So do the maths on that, folks. That's a, I had to do it really quickly in my head. That's 130,000 uplift that Liam has had for being bold and taking action. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard, where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name's Tabitha Bright and I'm the Head of Advising here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. Now, today we're running a special episode. It's a rerun of my interview with a fabulous young fellow called Liam, which I thought was super interesting and very pertinent and relevant to today's property market. We're getting a lot of rhetoric about young people being able to get into the market, about price points, about the lack of affordability and people not being able to service. And Liam was 18 when he went into his first property deal. He did it with hard graft and he did it with determination. And I just want to give everybody that's out there feeling like they don't have a chance in the property market uh, or that are worried about even their kids getting into the property market, the a, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, just to say that there are options. It does take commitment. Uh, and Liam will illustrate what that looks like. Um, but it's a fantastic story about succeeding and starting young because that's going to give Liam so many options as his property journey unfolds as he gets older and also that it is possible to get into the market even if you have minimal funds, uh, a, an income that's not in the 200k per household income bracket and what that looks like and how he did it. So enjoy this conversation with myself and Liam and his mum, Diane. Hi, everyone. It's Tabitha here from Positive Real Estate, head of the coaching and advising team. Now, today we've got a bit of a special interview on the podcast. Uh, we have Liam. Uh, welcome, Liam. How's it going? Thank you for having us. <laughs> Fantastic. And his mum, Diane. Now, <laughs> Hi, Diane. I've asked Diane short notice to sit in because I thought it might be interesting from a mum's perspective uh, and not to take away at all what um, Liam has achieved as a young man. So Liam is one of the unique breeds that we see from time to time here at Positive Real Estate that understand and start investing really early. And Liam would be one of one of the youngest investors that I have met, I've met a couple of other 18 year olds, but Liam was 18 when he started investing. He's now 20 years old and recently just settled his first property. And so I wanted to invite Liam here today because we hear a lot about how hard it is for young people to get into the market, how hard it is um, to build that long-term wealth uh, post baby boomers um, for us millennials. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm not a millennial. I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm grouping myself in with younger people, us Gen Xs. I can't believe I shot my own Gen X team down. Um, millennials and so forth. You know, there is a lot of rhetoric around how hard it is for us in the market. And while there is truth to that, there is also still opportunity. And what I know having coached people for over 16 years is that, Opportunity often comes disguised as hard work. And Liam has certainly been committed to getting into the property market. Um, and we're going to generously, because Liam's been prepared to share um, some of his personal information, uh, we're going to talk through, you don't have to have a silver spoon. You don't have to, um, you know, come from money to get in early. You just have to have a dedication and a great work ethic and a determination, and you have to be prepared to give some stuff up. And so, Liam, um, first of all, congratulations on your purchase. Thank you. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the property you purchased, where it is, um, what you chose, because it was off the plan purchase? Yeah, so it's a four-bedroom townhouse um, that's in Pimpermore. Pimpermore, yep. Yeah, so just got 
newly built as well. Yes. Um, with, like double car garage in it, two and a half bathrooms as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So it's a, so it's a townhouse and it's in Pimpama in Queensland, which is outer regions of Gold Coast, you could say, somewhere between Gold Coast and yep. Yeah. In that in that um that Hard stretch up. between Gold Coast and Brisbane, yeah? Yeah. Um and Pimpama's been doing relatively well as an area, um, especially for young people, young families, um, and it's got a, a high demand for rent, which is awesome. And Liam utilized a strategy that we call off the plan. So what that means is to the uninitiated is he puts a deposit down and then um, and he goes to contract. So he goes unconditional on that. So he has to be confident that when the build is finished, he can get finance and settle that property. Off the plan often gets a bad name because people don't understand off the plan and they don't understand when to utilize it. So Sometimes people get caught out with low valuations or they get caught out buying a substandard property because they haven't done their research on the developer. They get caught out because they buy at the peak of the market and then the market dips a little bit, which is normal in any market for it to do this kind of rise and dip as it over the long haul increases. And um, and so they feel like they've bought a dud. So Liam is part of our positive real estate family. His mum, Diane, <laughs> uh, what do we call you? Chief of staff, pretty much, I think is the yeah. title that <laughs> has been bestowed on you now. Diane is one of those rare people that um, we couldn't do without her in the business. She does a little bit of everything. She helps everybody out, um, but ultimately uh, she works with the uh, group CEO, um, the uh, Sam, uh, Jason Witten, Sam Saggers, uh, our property CEO, and of course, uh, Shay Witten, who's one of the owners of the company as well. So um, she's, she reports to them. And as an employee of Positive Real Estate, our families also get all of the benefits of coaching and uh, mentoring as part of their uh, salary package. So Liam gets to tap into all of the education, all of the experts, and of course, the property deals, which is awesome. So Liam, I'm sure they want to hear from you, not hear from me just rabbiting on. <laughs> Tell us, what did you purchase the property for? Um, yeah, so I bought it at the value of 620000 Yep, so 620000 uh -huh. And it was a two-year off the plan, wasn't it? So you went to contract when you were 18? Yeah. And you put down a deposit. Did you put down 5 or 10%? 10%. 10%. So you put down $62,000. So we'll talk about that in a second, how you came by that. Yep. And then when you settled two years later, so once it had been built – you didn't have any ongoing payments while it was being built um, because off the plan, you don't have to keep paying. You just pay, you just settle at settlement and then you have a mortgage. Uh, when you went to settle it, what did the valuation come back at? Um, so it came back at 680,000. 680,000. So that's a $60,000 increase. So while you've been, out there playing basketball, working hard, <laughs> living living your best life. Um, your property, even though you didn't have it in your hands, you've you've controlled a property in the market with going unconditional. That has been working for you in the background and made you another sixty thousand dollars on paper. Yeah, which yeah. is freaking awesome. So congratulations. Now yeah. Liam settled this property. How long ago? Uh, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, and one just resold in the complex. And can you tell me what that sold for? Yeah, so it sold for seven hundred and fifty. Seven hundred and fifty. Yeah. Wow. So, so do the maths on that, folks. That's a. I had to do it really quickly in my head. That's a hundred and thirty thousand uplift that Liam has had for being bold and taking action. Um and. We'll talk about your income, what you do for work, how you have come up with the deposit in just a second. But one hundred and fifty thousand for a twenty-year-old, that's a that's a lot of money. I mean, it's a lot of money for anyone. I'd be quite happy if someone gave me one hundred and fifty thousand. 
Um, and I mean, how do you feel about that? You must feel amazing. Yeah, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> like so many young men of your age, you're very understated. Like if it was me and I was 20, I'd be bringing out the glitter pom-poms and uh, <laughs> raising the roof. But um, I, I get this um, I get this must mean a lot for you, um, that 150,000. Yeah. And kudos to you and your hard work. Now, tell me, we get on, we'll get on to the renting of it and how you're going to manage your your money but tell me about this deposit because a lot of people are like oh yeah but where does an 18 year old come up with sixty two thousand dollars?" so tell me about that yeah so as soon as I graduated from school and say so it was straight working um pretty full on like five or six days a week yep so yeah I work as a like food and beverage captain at the Marriott in surface oh yep yep um so yeah just worked really hard straight out of school and um, saved up a nice chunk of money. I yep. also had my parents also give me a nice present of 10000 to put towards the house as well. That's wonderful. So yep. That also helped a lot. A lot. Yep. So, yeah. And so, you know, $10,000, um, D, I'm sure you were more than happy to help Liam out to get him across the line with that 10000 when you saw his commitment because, you know, working five, six days a week on your feet, um, I understand you did extra shifts. Yeah, so I'd pick up shifts whenever I can and stuff. If I have a day off, I could always work more just to get more money. So, Yeah, which yeah. is fantastic. And so you're you're making a deliberate choice, and this is what I really want to hone in for people. Even people my age, I'm 55, like it, it is a commitment to change your trajectory with your wealth creation. And sometimes it means... I won't I don't like the word pain, but I'll use the saying short-term pain for long-term gain. And what's so impressive about Liam is his mindset at this age, because I can tell you when I was 18, or actually just a little bit over 18, I inherited an amount. I inherited around forty thousand dollars, which back then was like probably the equivalent of <laughs> receiving eighty thousand dollars. And my mum said to me, Tab do something decent with this. It's your opportunity to uh, to get into the property market and understand back then I was earning a wage. I was on a wage of $24,000 as an apprentice um, finished artist. And so $40,000 was a lot of money. I didn't have any money skills back then. I didn't understand money. I understood basic budgeting but I didn't understand how to make money work for me. I wasn't particularly interested, to be fair. At that stage, I am sorry to say I was all about having a good time and going out and partying hard, which I understand a lot of young people are in that place. And I get it. I totally get it. However, if we want to change our trajectory, the earlier we get into the market, for the sake of giving up a little bit today of lifestyle, we can make a massive difference. And what I was saying to Liam just before, and he assured me it was the plan, was that if he just picks up a couple more like this, holds them and pays down some debt, you know, he could be retired in his 30s and never have to work another day. <laughs> That's what's so crazy about this. Um, and that it is achievable for so many people. So Liam, I understand that Dion and um, Gary, your dad, gave you a gift of ten thousand grand. That's that's awesome, but that doesn't take away from the fact that you worked hard and saved fifty two thousand at um, a very early age for your deposit, and then you had to, I imagine, save for your stamp duty and everything else while the property was being built. Would that yeah. be correct? Yep. Yeah. So I was still saving throughout the time. Yep. Um, I just do it as a normal sort of thing. It's, it's not necessarily saving for up for one thing. It's just constantly saving so yeah. it's just there when I need it sort of thing. That's fantastic because yeah. I hadn't learned those skills and to close the loop on what happened to the $40,000 that I inherited, mm. I frittered it away. I frittered it oh. away on partying, on living and on clothes and having a good time. And while I certainly had a good time for about 12 months, um, you know, I had nothing to show for it at the end of the day. And I remember the intense 
shame that went with that. It was such an awful feeling that I had lost an opportunity to do something sensible and I couldn't get it back and I had nothing to show for it. And it really sat home hard with me. And sometimes the people we meet in our lives can show us a different path. And I was very fortunate uh, at that time to meet my um, my hubby, Vin, and he was very much into understanding money and wealth creation. He wanted to have a business. He wanted to invest. And, um, and he kind of inspired me in that space to learn some stuff. You've been fortunate to have, you know, your mum and Gary and what they're learning through positive real estate and what you're able to tap into. But there's a difference between just knowing and actually taking action. And so once again, kudos to you, my friend, for taking action. So then the next thing is you've got your 52K. Um, Dion and Gary have given you the other 10K. That's awesome. You put your money down. You're busy saving because you've got awesome saving habits, which is super important. Do you have a rule around how much you save out of your income or you just save whatever you can? I usually try and put, so I get paid fortnightly. I usually try and put half straight into a savings account and then yep. just like not touch it. Yep. And then with the other half that goes towards like paying rent, um, fuel, food, that sort of stuff. And then okay. if I have bonus extra sometimes, then I just put more into savings. and. Yeah. That, that's impressive. Okay. So at least 50% of your, sa- of your income goes to savings. Yeah. And just so everyone's clear, um, Liam's given me permission to share his income. So he's on around 64000 plus super, and then he picks up extra shifts. So, you know, we're not talking about, once again, the silver spoon. Liam's just been very dedicated, and part of that has been giving up some stuff. So I was asking you, has it come at, come at the expense of your lifestyle at all? Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so like, there's obviously times where I could get invited to go out and stuff where I turn it down. So it might be say like a public holiday where I can get paid more and ah, it's worth it to work. Nice um, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> and I also do have my fun, obviously. Like I worked in the Wit Sundays for a couple of months as well. So I was making money whilst also having a bit of fun and holidaying. That's, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's really cool. My plan for the coming time as well, where I'm going to be going to Canada so I can work and have fun as well oh Uh, that's awesome and so you know it's really nice to hear that you're managing to mix work and and play together a little bit which is pretty cool hospo can be great like that especially when you're young (laughs) Um, i've got i've got neighbors that are in hospitality and they drive me absolutely bonkers because they party on a sunday and monday night and it drives me around the bend because of course that's when I want to be getting sleep for work. And I have had a bit of a shout over the fence occasionally. I'm one of those old, old ladies in the, in the street now I've become that. But, um, and so part of what is next for you is we heard just then that you're looking at moving to Canada. And so you're going to work over in Canada and you're going to, I imagine you'll have a similar thing where you're saving, saving some money while you're in Canada and you're going to look at that for around six months to a year, depending on how you go. Then you've got some plans to do a bit of work in Europe and travel around Europe. Yep. So you're still able to maintain lifestyle and go and have adventures. This hasn't come at the expense of your life choices. You've just been very deliberate and disciplined about stuff. There's a um, There's a really interesting podcast, and I think it's, got a documentary called The Minimalists and they talk about exactly what you're doing, Liam. Then they made a whole podcast and business around it where they say, don't just get caught up in consumerism and just spend your money like like I did when I was your age. Uh, They say, be very deliberate about your choices. So spend your money and don't be shy about spending your money on the stuff that really matters to you, but don't be unconscious about just frittering it away on shit. Oh, excuse my French. We'll have to put a little rule. <laughs> have, to, have to put a beep over that one. Maybe um, maybe the content team can fix that for me. Uh, so, um, so once again, congratulations. Now, the next thing that's really interesting, and I want to show you guys some facts and data, 
because I'm going to pre-frame this. I want to show you how good the deal that Liam did actually is. Because if you guys can see this, this is the house price guide for Pimpama based on realestate.com.au. So any of you guys can look this up um, and have a look at this data. So in Pimpama, we can see that the median house price is around 730000 And you can see that it's had over the two years that um, that Liam has bought his property and had it off the plan, we've seen some great growth in that market. And because Liam has bought a quality property and the best that he could afford to buy, it's meant that he's got a slightly better than average result because a better than average property generally gets you a better than average result. What is super interesting is if we come right down here and we look at rents. Now, actually, sorry, I'll make you all feel dizzy and sick by scrolling this up and down. The median rent in Pimpama is $650 a week. Now, Liam bought his property for $620. And if he was getting $650 a week, that would still be a really good rent yield. That would be around a 5.2, 5.3% yield, which we want to know what is the average yield for a house slash townhouse in this area. Whoops, where are we? And we can see here that the average investment yield is around 4.9%. So even at six fifty a week, he would be getting an above average rent yield because he bought the best quality property that he could purchase. Now, and so that makes it extra desirable, which means he gets extra rent. The fabulous thing for Liam is that the rental market has continued to increase over the time he originally went to contract. So while he bought at six twenty, the average yield is now 4.9% on 730. And what that has meant for, um, if I just look at my notes here, what I've looked at, uh, sorry, what I what that means for Liam is that your rent is, and I wrote it down, 750 per week. So that's a $620,000 property renting well, when he purchased it, because we're going off his purchase price, not the market price, renting at $750 per week. That, guys, is massive. That is a 6.2% yield. Liam, catching you on the hop, because I didn't ask you this, do you know what your mortgage balance is at the moment, roughly? Uh, no, I'd have to look. So it'd be, it'd be roughly, you've only just settled, so it'll be... 90% of 620. Yeah, 585, I think. Minus 90. I, I should, be, should be able to do this in my head, shouldn't I? But now I'm panicking and choking, so bear with me. Mine, uh, <laughs> 558. So you, yeah, will have a, <laughs> so you will have a debt of 558,000 that you're servicing. Now... Now we can work out what his rental income is based on his debt, which is a measure for his cash flow. So then we go 750 times 52 is 39,000. So Liam's getting 39,000 gross. That's before all the expenses minus 500 and, uh, sorry, 39,000, confusing everybody, divided by his debt of 558 gives us actually a real-time yield of 6.9%. That's nearly a 7% yield against his debt. Mm. Liam, do you know what your mortgage interest rate is? 7.2. Um, 7.2. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. Yeah. So Liam is paying 7.2 on that debt, but he is making a 7.9% rent return. So gross before any expenses come out, he's he would be considered cash flow positive. Now, on top of that, there's obviously going to be rental management fees, insurances, rates, body corporate, and a raft of other expenses. So he'll still probably slightly be in the negative um, for the entire financial year, but it will be minimal 
because his rent yield is so strong. And this is because he has bought in an area which we're seeing strong capital growth. He's bought a property that appeals to the maximum amount of people. So there's maximum pressure on the rental market. He has bought an above quality property. So it has maximum demand. And he has had two years in a rising market. So he's bought at the right time of the market. All of this is what we teach our clients at Positive Real Estate. And it has worked perfectly for Liam in that he has got a fantastic result. And that high strong, that high rent yield also shows and corroborates the va- the new value of his property that is probably around $750,000, which is just freaking phenomenal. So massive congratulations. Yeah. Um, and your next step now is start starting to look at property number two, correct? Yeah. Awesome. And so everyone's going to be saying, oh my God, he's 20 years old and he's looking at his second property. <laughs> and, um, and so where would you get your next deposit funds from? Um, well, I'm getting... Um, he's saving away because what he's doing is he's already he's already he's already <laughs> got enough for the EOI. He's got that put aside. Oh yes, um, and which is expression of interest. Saving. Yes, expression of interest, and he's going to have a session with you, Cab, and just Woo-hoo. work out what's the best one uh, for him to go, yep. and then uh, make sure that it's another off the plan for two years, which allows him to save more. Perfect. Um, and then you know he's already spoken with his broker. Yes. To, you know, to go through in 12 months to refinance the current property and Get pull some out. Equity out. Yeah. Yep. That yeah. is amazing. So there's a number of things we can do here. So for somebody like Liam, um, he already has equity in the property. So we can look at utilizing some of that equity for his next deposit. I just wasn't sure if he'd magically managed to do some extra shifts and come up with another 50 grand. It wouldn't <laughs> have surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> Our, he's, got, our... he's, got about, he's got about 15 put aside already. Oh, yeah. oh my so. God. You, yeah, you're, you're pretty special, Liam. Though, um, but what we do want to account for, so from a coaching perspective, when I'm coaching somebody like Liam, the first thing I'll be asking him is once he's traveled and he come back, comes back to Australia, is he happy to live with mum and dad again for a bit? Because <laughs> that can help um, with living costs. Uh, and uh, Diane, um, obviously, you and Gary would have to be happy with that as well. Um, We're happy to be. Yep. Oh, of course, with your it kids. Actually, it's a really good tool for, like, we do get him to pay rent to cover yep. some of the basic costs. Yep. Um, so that's sitting in an account that's his, and that's why he does have some of the savings. So it's a forced savings as well. So on top of his normal savings, the rent that we're collecting from oh, yeah. him is there as well. So, oh, that's awesome. You know, so we put that aside for him so that's there as well. It's like his emergency fund in case. Perfect. Um, and another thing that he and his mates do really well is instead of going out like a lot of young people, they a lot of them come around here and they go and cook themselves a barbecue and sit You've got the pool and, and yeah. The pool and they stay <laughs> they stay at home and they're quite happy to do that even when we're here. So Oh, oh well uh, Gold star for parenting. <laughs> I don't have the pool here. Melbourne's not so great with pools, but um, uh, yes, certainly a, a, a great strategy um, for parents to help their kids out and get them into the market. So there's a couple of things that I want you guys to take from this, particularly if you're young and you're looking at investing. Once Liam's obviously got the property down pat, we also have to focus on keeping him safe. We can't be gung-ho about this and just go, oh, for shits and giggles, we'll just get him into another property quick smart. We have to be very strategic about this. So if he was to lose his job, if something was to happen to him and he couldn't work, um, all of those normal life challenges we have to plan for. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure he's got all his insurances, which if I know D, he will have. Uh, yeah. secondly, we want to make sure that he has a buffer and it sounds like he's got a good buffer in place. He's got that 15 K so that if he lost a tenant or somebody did something daft to the tenant and it took a couple of months, uh, not to the tenant, to the property, um, and repairs had to be done and the insurance company took a couple of months to pay out. 
Liam can cover his mortgage payments. So we've always got to have that safety net. Then we look at where are his deposit funds coming from next. And so equity is a no brainer because if his property today is worth 750, let me do some quick maths. I have not prepared this earlier. So this is live folks, 750 times eight, oops, 750 times, don't you hate iPhones? I should have a calculator. <laughs> times 80% is 624 minus his $558,000 mortgage gives him 66,000 in equity. And that's at an 80% lend. So there might be a chance he could go up to 90 and get another 70 odd grand out. But even at 80%, he could access 66K, which is enough for another deposit into his next property. Then as he, if we employed the off the plan strategy again, and he's prepared to work hard and continue doing what he's doing, he can save up for his stamp duties and everything else over that two, one to two to three year period, depending on the off the plan. We want to get him exposure to a secondary market. He's got Queensland now. So we might look at, we could do Queensland again and do a big capital city like Brisbane, or we might choose to look at something um, like uh, Melbourne as a next purchase. If we could stretch to it and it worked, we might look at changing the type of property. It might be a good quality apartment or it might be a house and land depending on his budget. Now, house and land usually isn't off the plan. So that, that, that may not be a strategy that suits Liam right now. He might need that apartment as his next step. But just because you buy apartment doesn't mean you don't get capital growth. Once again, it comes down to the apartment. That's the story for another day. So sounds like you and I, Liam, are going to meet for a strategy session at some point, yeah. <laughs> which is awesome. I'm looking really forward to that. And we'll talk through what your options are and your possibilities. And a key part of that is part of the six star team, which of course is the finance team. And we need to get your servicing looked at. And that means what broker. <laughs> yes, yeah, who is awesome. And we're looking at what Liam can borrow next based on his current assets, liabilities, and income. And the wonderful thing is because his rental income is so high and it's and it's considered average for that market based on what he's purchased that will go towards his income as well, which is fantastic. So not only does the mortgage get clocked up as a liability, but because he's got that awesome, strong rental income, it will actually add on to and support future borrowing for another, for another property purchase. And I'll just ask you one more question, Liam, other than the property, which is good debt, have, um, have you got any bad debt? Do you have credit cards, lay buys, no, no. All my, everything I sort of use, I always pay in full, like my car and everything. I always make sure I have the money before I buy it. Good man. And I never use a credit card. I always spend money I have. I don't, I don't like borrowing stuff. So no, yeah. no, no bad debt. Okay. Yeah. Another top tip. <laughs> no bad debt. Work extra shifts. Be prepared to let something go in order for the greater good, which is freaking awesome um and but you still have fun you still have plans you're still going to travel uh mm -hmm. and um you still have a good time with your mates you're just very conscious about the decisions you make and that kind of maturity particularly finance financial maturity is very rare in someone so young so congratulations um amazing job and uh thank you very much for um for letting me interview you, you today i want to ask both of you one last question. So I'll start with Liam. Yep. Um, what advice would you have for anyone that's wanting to do what you do? I think just start somewhere. Like even if it's just saving like a little amount, it's better than not saving anything at the end of the day. And yep. then having like a small goal you can reach and then you reach that. So even if it's like save like five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, and just keep building it. And that's what worked for me at least. So yeah. Good man. And if it takes you a bit longer than two years and you don't have mum and dad to help out with that, even that little top up, 
it's not the end of the world. You could have bought a cheaper property, right? Or, yeah. um, or you might have just saved for six months more or whatever in order to get that extra that extra bit. Um, great advice, Liam. Thank you. And D, what have you noticed that um, has you think motivated Liam and makes him a little bit different from a goal setting perspective? I think that he knows that he doesn't want to rely on other people for his income once he's older. And, you know, he doesn't necessarily want to do his own business, but he wants to have something that he can use as a foundation. And you know, he's been lucky enough to be around some great mentors like yourself and obviously Jason and so forth yeah. and being able to um, grasp bits of nuggets. And he's got a, he's got one of the best work ethics you know, of someone of his age. And I do think that that came down to his ethics from sport um, uh, and potentially, you know, watching me. But um, yeah, you, you do have a very good work ethic, do you? I don't think there's anyone that works harder than you in the company. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I just think, you know, being willing to give up some things that, you know, yeah. going out every weekend and those things give those up for the long term. And I think Liam said it perfectly, you know, short term, pain for long-term gain yeah and you know, he's got some big goals and you know he's on the way to getting them that's for sure oh well I can't wait to see where it takes you I think um I think this will be exciting and uh mm. and good on you um congratulations hun you've done an amazing job and um and yeah really excited for our next coaching session mm. and uh talk about what's possible next and uh what property next and uh and enjoy your trip to Canada I've been to Canada twice now and I absolutely love it. I think being a Kiwi, I find it very similar to home. <laughs> but um, on a grander scale, the, the mountains there are crazy and um, and I'm sure you'll love Europe as well. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thanks Thank you. What was that? Sorry. Uh, thanks for having us on. Oh, no. Well, thank you for being part of it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tab. Thank Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.